Chosen. And I'm Valentina, and together we are Hymns and Metaphors. And you're watching Outspoken with Hymns and Metaphors. Bringing, bringing the, the kingdom, kingdom to, to the, the culture. culture. What's up, y'all? We're so glad to be back here today, tonight, this evening. First and foremost, I want to shout out WYTV7 Christian Broadcasters Network. They are a, it is a, a network of really um, amazing Christian-based podcasts, and they saw the vision in us, and um, so they're the reason why we're even here today. And also, um, they are a nonprofit, so feel free to donate. Go to um, witv7.org and click that donate button because um, it's people like you who help people like us to stay in business. Okay. Um, also, this is the beginning of May, and so sorry, babe. So we have two more shows left in this season, and then we'll take a little break and then come back maybe, I think, in August, um, give you all another season. But we really want you to kind of let us know how you felt about this season. Um, send us a comment on the bottom of our video or send us a message and let us know what, what you liked, what you didn't like, maybe some topics that you would like to hear us talk about for the next season. Um, Cause we're doing this for you. This is not for us. This is for God. This is so that, you know, we can share our hearts with you about what God has instilled in us. And um, so we just want to hear from you. Um, should we come back next season? Let us know. So the, um, the topic that we'll be discussing today is uh, co-parenting the kingdom way. So chosen, uh -huh. what is <laughs> co-parenting? I mean, I don't know if it's an answer for, uh, you know, a really good answer for that. Right. I think it depends on the people. Mm. You know, the people. So, but for me, co-parenting is just uh, being able to, like, a uh, co, what is it, cohabitate? Cohabitate. Cohabitate. Yes. <laughs> with the... In uh, this world. Cohabitate this in this world. <laughs> with um, the, the mother or, if you're a woman, the father. Of your child you know just being able to have an understanding um to where y'all can both get along uh and and, and set a the best example you can you can for the children and, and co-parenting involves when the mother and the father of the child are not actually together right, right? right. so um like our situation so when i um met david and you know started dating david he had two children already. And um, of course they weren't my children. So I had to come in and step in and, you know, be able to accept the role of stepmother. Um, just to give you a little background about me. When I was younger, I always said to myself, I will not get with a man that has children. Okay. And truthfully, that's because I have a, a lot of bad things that happened in my past with men I dated who had baby mamas and cheated on me with the baby mama and she tried to blame me for some other stuff that I didn't even do to her child. We almost want to call the police on me. We're not going to go there, okay? But I had a, a really um, a hard time even accepting the fact that I could be with someone that had children. But then as I got older um, and, and became a Christian and became to – you know, to discuss what I wanted with God and just open up to whatever God had for me. He actually made me realize that I needed someone with children already. And you're probably saying, why? Well, 
the reason is because I was an only child growing up and I'm already 36 years old right now and I can't be popping out you know three two three babies anymore because I'm you know I'm getting up there in age and I don't want my child to be an only child so God showed me if I have a ready-made family you know whatever if when when chosen and I do have a child together they already have a brother and a sister you know there for them ready to be a brother and sister um and and I always wanted a big family you know because again I'm an only child so I never had a big family we didn't have big holiday gatherings and you know big vacations family vacations and so I missed that as a child and I don't you know I would want my child to have that experience so God kind of opened my eyes up to that um but it was kind of a struggle at first when we started dating more so because of my past because I didn't trust the mothers of his children um and I had some kind of good reasoning behind it you know it's just some things that maybe were said or um you know the level of respect that I wasn't getting from them um but but I knew that, um, you know, we had to just keep pushing. I knew that um, it, it, what, he wasn't my past. I couldn't put him in the same box as my past. Um, so that, for example, and also the other struggle that I had was just being able to step into the role of mom. You know, because people who aren't going into a relationship with children and they have a child, they have the baby in their belly, they plan for it, you know, they they have the baby, they have it as an infant, they watch it grow up, and you know, they they learn how to be a mom. That's what that's what I've heard mothers say is that, that you learn how to be a mom when you have your baby. Well, I haven't had that experience yet. So I don't know how to be a mom. I'm a teacher. And I will say that helped a little bit. But there's a difference in being a teacher and a mom, you know? So that was another struggle that I had going into this relationship was just stepping into the role of mom and really letting them know that I love them, that I'm not just your friend, but I'm your mom and I'm not going to go anywhere. So those are my struggles at first. Yeah. Well, my struggles were, um, well, my, my situation is a little bit different. I've been like a single dad a long time. It's just been me and my son and my daughter. Um, so my struggles were trying to make sure, just trying to be protective and just not bring anybody into my children's life. And, um, you know, I just wanted them to be able to respect her and I wanted her to be able to, whoever I was going to meet, to be able to respect them. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't want to, you know, bring anybody around my kids and they didn't like kids, you know. <laughs> right, that would or, not have been a good thing. <laughs> you know, or, or they were mean or anything yeah. like that. Um, so one of my, so that was one of my, definitely one of my struggles is just making sure that um, it was the, the right timing and the right one to be able to introduce to my children. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, just being a protector. Because uh, it's just been me. It's just been me and them two. Mm -hmm. Like that's it for a very, very long time. Yeah. I had my children when I was pretty young. So, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, another one was, uh, you know, being married, getting, you know, being newly married. Just making sure that now that I have found my, you know, the Lord has blessed me with my wife, to make sure that I don't let the past, I don't let things that go on. Um, you know, maybe, maybe the, the, the mother of my, my son's mom, maybe she had an attitude or, you know, it was miscommunication or, 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 or even things with my children, you know, maybe between my son and my daughter, maybe something that went on and I just have to make sure that it doesn't interfere with my marriage. Hmm. Um, it is, you know, bringing everybody together and just making sure that everybody's on one accord, making sure there's an understanding that, hey, you know, you know, to my kids, you know, I'm I'm the dad, you know, and to their mothers, I am a, a married man now. These are but these are my two kids, and we can co-parent. And you have to respect my wife, and you you already know you have to respect me. 
you know, so yeah, so those are those are two, you know, some of my struggles. And truthfully, now, um, you know, the relationships with the mothers of his children have gotten, you know, 10, 10 times better. But it took time. You know, it took, um, it took, and I, and I really, truly, I understand this because, you know, if I was the mother of um, a child who, whose father was now with another woman, I wouldn't really trust her as much or even trust that she was going to be around for the long haul, you know, that she wasn't going anywhere. Um, and, and that was one of the things that we struggled with for a while, you know, that the, one of the mothers was feeling like, um, well, I'm not going to give her that benefit of the doubt because she's not your wife yet, you know, um, but I am his wife now. And because we've gone through that and, um, and, and I've always been respectful to them. You know, even if there was a little something that I didn't like, I never showed that to them. I would never, you know, show my true colors, I guess I should say. I never went and, and had attitude with them or, or, you know, was in the car while we dropped somebody off and was like, eh, eh, eh. you know, I never did that because I always wanted to be the bigger person. And because of that, our relationship now, you know, is 10 times better. We have each other's phone number. I pick, I pick the kids up from school sometimes. You know, they can call me if they need to. Sometimes if they can't get in touch with him, they'll call me. Um, so, you know, that's, that's gotten much better over time. And I'm sure, you know, it will just keep improving, you know, as the years go on. But not only that, but the relationship with the children, um, you know, I really am their mother. Um, even though they didn't come out of me, uh, I really have a genuine love for them. Um, and, you know, it comes from this being my husband. Like, you know, we are one now. So the love that he has for them, I have to share that. And I genuinely do. Um, and, and it's such a good feeling to know that they share that with me. Um, you know, his son was three years old when we met. He's now five. And he, you know, calls me mommy sometimes. Of course, he calls me Alicia sometimes too. Um, but he calls me mommy and, you know, he'll cuddle with me or, you know, he's lovey-dovey with me, you know. And, and our daughter, Treasure, she always wants to sit by me and hold my hand and play with my hair. And, you know, it's always, you know, mommy, Alicia, mommy. And so I, there is no lack of love there between us. Um, but like I said, there are still hiccups along the road. There are still things that happen, um, you know, that it's not a perfect, it's not a perfect situation. I don't think anything was ever going to be perfect. But David and I have really learned how to separate um, the, the issues that we may have with the mother or between the children um, from coming in between our relationship. You know, um, we have enough things to worry about. And not having that outside thing to come in and, and separate us. Um, just a couple of things that I want to mention that are really important when you are co-parenting is remember that your spouse has to be more important than your children. <sighs> I know, that's a hard one. And truthfully, if I was, if it was my children, like my biological children and I had a man come into the relationship it would be really hard for me to put him before my children but the bible says that it's god your spouse and then your children and in order to to get the right flow of things it has to be that way and you know david has done a really good job of making sure that he shows me that i'm first um, even to the point to where he's had to say no to the mothers of his child one time. She needed him to do something, and he said no because I already told my wife that I was going to do this, and I have to do this for her. She didn't like it. She, she, you know, said he didn't have his priorities straight. But what she doesn't realize is that's not how you do it in the kingdom. In the kingdom, he had his priorities straight because he chose his wife first, and and just little stuff like that, you know, helped me to feel more comfortable. It helped me to realize that I, I had the right standing with him. Um, the other important thing is that we have to remember that we are on the same side 
We are a unified front. We are the Moors. We are husband and wife when it comes to parenting. Um, David will discuss things with me before he makes any decisions when it comes to the kids. If one of the mothers will call him and, and say, hey, can you do such and such? Or I need to do such and such, can you help out? He will not answer right away. He will say, let me discuss it with my wife and then I'll call you back, right? right. Yeah, and, and we'll sit down and we'll discuss it and we'll come to the best situation for the both of us and then he'll call back and say, this is what we've decided. And you know, truthfully guys, that has been the, so comforting to me because I know that I'm part of the decision. I'm part of the family. I am important enough to him to help him make decisions when it comes to our children. And lastly, but not least, it's really important to remember that you always have to be the bigger person, especially because we are Christians. We are sons and daughters of the true and living God, and we are representations of him. So we have to always be the bigger person. How's that been for you? <laughs> It's, it's always hard. It's always hard. But um, that's one of the things that, you know, I, I am, I'm actually proud of myself for, you know, being on this walk, just knowing that, you know, I have to represent Jesus. I have to, I have to represent Christ. And that means even loving the people who I'm really not too fond of. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, bringing it, um, bringing it back to this as far as with the co-parenting and you know they they the mothers of my children they know that Alicia's a Christian poet and they know that I'm a Christian rapper um and of course because you know they just don't really understand they, they think it's a they think it's more of a I guess a joke they kind of remind me don't take me serious yeah when I'm like you know I'm, I'm a Christian I'm a Christian rapper. This is what I believe in, you know. So, and because that's because when he was with them, he wasn't like that. So he's different now than what right. they're used to. So it's hard for them to understand. Right. So they, so they kind of really don't know me. They don't know right. the, the new me. Right. They know me from eight, nine, ten years ago. Right. But um, so uh, as far as far as that, I have to represent Jesus because. They already think that, well, they already don't understand the new me. So they already think that I'm the old David. So if they are, if say if it's a miscommunication somewhere, and they, you know, they're yelling and, you know, they, they might, you know, they cuss and do all that on the phone. You know, if I was to reciprocate that, mm -hmm. if I was to do that back to them, mm -hmm. you know, that would just be letting them know, oh, well, you know, he's not a Christian. He's, right. he's not this. He's not Big that. Christian he you is. Know, he, you know, he's a, he's a hypocrite and, and this and this and that and this and that. You know, and it just feeds into the, the stereotype that, you know, people that's in the kingdom or, or Christians get, yeah. you know. So um, that's that's one of the things. And, and just most importantly, just being like Christ regardless. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. you know, loving them anyway and, and praying for them. Yeah. You know, a lot of times I pray for their growth. I pray for them to mature, I, you know. Um, so just being like Jesus and being the bigger person and just forgiving even when you don't want to. And, it, and it's hard. It is <laughs> it is hard to forgive people who talk crazy to you. Ooh. You know, it's hard to communicate with people who who know the old you. So that's how they, that's how they come at you. That's how they communicate. So, um, yeah, it just takes a lot of strength. But thank God that. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm past that stage in my life and. And we walk yeah. in forgiveness. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so it's important. So the other thing that we wanted um, to mention about this whole co-parenting thing is um, that sometimes, and this is how it is with us, and maybe, you know, in other situations, um, but sometimes when co-parenting, only one side of the family is really a Christian or is really, you know, a strong believer. Um, and so it's important. Um, oh, yeah, it's important that, you know, we, you know, we be an example and teach, and teach them the right way to, the right way to go. Um, yeah. For example, in, in my household, in our household, yeah. 
um, the mothers aren't Christians. Um, you know, and I'm not judging them in anything, but, you know, I'm just being honest, being real. They don't go to church, uh, and they do what they do. But, um, so that's why I, I know that it's very important that they see that, they see, um, the kingdom and they see people who, 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 who walk in faith and, and, and we go to church and, you know, they get to experience. We pray every you know, night. They get to experience Jesus and, and, and this, the, the better side of things. The we right read the Bible with them. We tell them Bible stories. Yeah. Tell them about the Easter situation. I was just sitting them down and just explaining them the backstory of Easter yeah. and just really the, the real meaning of celebrating Resurrection right. Sunday. Right. Um, and for Easter, what the Santa, Santa for Christmas, right. you know, all, all, all of that stuff. We just make sure that we tell them the truth. And, um, you know, the Easter bunnies aren't real. Santa's not real. You know, and and Jesus, Jesus is real. And it's really been an amazing journey to be able to see our daughter in church. She will raise her hands. Oh, sorry. She raises her hands in worship. Mm -hmm. Like, I love that. But it's because she sees that in us. Because she sees how genuine we are when we worship and when we pray. And and so I really, you know, I truly believe that it's because of of us and because of our prayers for them. Like mm -hmm. you said, you pray for their mothers. But we pray for them every night, you know, because we only see them like 20% of the time. And so that time that we're not there, we're just praying for them and praying that, that they know Jesus and that um, that he protects them. So, um, sorry, guys. This means a lot to me. Um, but, yeah, so just keeping them in prayer and keeping the mothers in prayer um, and um, just making sure to teach them the truth and letting them see Jesus in us. And, and again, um, we don't have all the answers. You know, we're, like I said, we're not counselors and we're not perfect or anything like that. But, you know, we just wanted to come on here and talk to you all about how we do our co-parenting co thing over here at the Moors, <laughs> Chosen, and Valentina. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, <laughs> yeah, and we just we just enjoy talking to you all. And we hope that it, it encourages or maybe even, uh, you know, educates yeah. someone who, who might be about to get into a situation with a, a, a you know, young young man or young woman and they got a co-parent. Or if you are a, a single parent and, you know, you know that either right now you're in a relationship or one day you will get into a relationship and you know that your significant other is going to have to be part of your co-parenting, um, you know, we hope maybe we kind of shed a little bit of light on just how we do it. Because that's really what, we're, what we do on this podcast, just kind of talk about how we do things and how we try to bring the kingdom into the culture. Um, and, you know, we hope that it helps some people along. Um, so. Just like we always do at the end of every show, we either do a song by Chosen or a poem by myself, Valentina. And so I am going to be doing a poem for you tonight. But before I do that, I just want to make a couple announcements. So we have a song together. It's actually the song that's on the beginning intro to our podcast, the one that plays before the podcast starts. That is our duet song. It's called Wait on, it. Wait on It. And we are releasing the song onto Amazon and Spotify and Apple Music um, so that you can purchase the song. And the release date is May 14th. Hey, May 14th. We're releasing our first um, duet song together. You can pre-order it on Mother's Day, right? Um, but also, our song played on Streets 103.3 this past Sunday with Tanya Rivens in the um, Inspirational Mornings on Sunday morning. And we are going to be making a campaign for people to start requesting our song on Sunday morning with um, Streets 103.3. So the more that it can get played, the better. So if you like the song, um, go request it on Sunday mornings with Streets 103.3 in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, and also, you'll be able to download the song on May 14th. 14th. Right. All right. So let me share this poem with you. Now, this, because we're talking about children, um, this was a poem that I felt was appropriate. This was actually one that I wrote 
for a youth group, um, the youth group event that I that we did. It was hymns and metaphors. As if you don't know what hymns and metaphors is, we go to different churches and youth groups and our reaches, and we bring Christian hip hop and spoken word um, in as part of the entertainment. So this piece that I wrote, um, the topic that they were going for for the youth event was make life count. And um, so I wrote this around making your life count, but and kind of even along the lines of what we've been discussing tonight is knowing the truth and being bold in what you believe and not being afraid to um, to share your beliefs, especially kids now in, in, in the world that we live in. It's hard for them to, um, you know, if, to be a believer around the world and what they see, um, but to just stand up for your beliefs and, and that's okay. So. Are you ready? Okay. <laughs> they say you only live once, YOLO, so make it count. That it's a free country, so live out loud. That actions speak louder than words. But I say ask a poet, because my words are my actions. Hold on, let me show you. Because I won't take this thing sitting down, and I'm not scared to make my stand. You see, I am here to stand my ground, and I must make this one count. You know, they say that miracles only happen in the past, but have you seen my life? That all Christians are just hypocrites. So are you perfect? That this whole thing started with a big bang. So why haven't you evolved lately? And that there's no such thing as heaven or hell. But are you willing to bet your eternity on that? You see, they say that you should color within the lines. Well, whose line is it anyway? And I don't straddle any lines because I'm too hot to be lukewarm. And then they say to just be yourself. Yet social media gives us all the filters and we idolize all the Hollywood actors who wish they could just be themselves again. And then they tell our little boys and little girls that they can decide whether they want to be little boys or little girls. Like choosing our own identity was not already a God-given chemistry because they say that it's all right to accept this new identity, morality, that old school ways of thinking are no longer our reality, yet babies are being born with no daddies and AIDS is still a fairly common disease because we chose to believe what they say. But I say, being yourself can also mean standing up for your beliefs going against the grain, even if the wood around you would rather burn than be petrified. And if they try to bury you, tell them you're a seed. And if they try to drown you, teach them how to breathe. And if all they do is clown you, show them where your joy comes from. So instead they will say that you are the reason they found hope. You are the reason they didn't give up that it's because of you that they believe that God still exists. And it's your responsibility to make this one count, not just for yourself, but for them. <laughs> that was it, that was it. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was really good. Thanks, babe. That was really good. Well, I hope, we hope you enjoyed it. We hope you enjoyed our, our talk. Um, this evening again, let us know if you have any topics you want us to talk about. Leave us a message under the video. Send us a direct message. We love to talk. If you need any prayer requests, we're here too. If you want hymns and metaphors to come to your event, we got you. Um, signing out. <laughs>